Hey guys, welcome back to 100 things you can do with Red Hat Management products. My name is Maxim Burgerhout and today we'll be talking about um, content views and composite content views. Um, I'm going to try to explain that with a digital whiteboard and that is a new thing for me. So let me know what you think in the comments later on. And for now, let's just jump right in. So let's start off with the very simplest of scenarios. This is a model of a base operating system content view that you could use, for example, for a generic server build. This content view has the RHEL 7 server repository and the Satellite 6 tools repository enabled. What would usually happen to a content view like this is that we publish a new version of the content view into the library. Let's say we publish version 1.0. And from library, we promote it into test, from there into QA, and then on into production. So let's look at a slightly more complicated scenario. Let's add an application to this content view. Let's add app one. This application is just a repository, just like the RHEL 7 and Satellite 6 tools repositories are. And it follows the same lifecycle path as the operating system does itself. This means that both the application and the operating system will have the same update cycle. This means I can just add it to the base operating system content view and have the activation keys take care of access or denying access to the software in that application repository. And I can even add a second application to this content view, as long as the application can be managed through the same lifecycle path. Which system can actually access the repositories that belong to App 1 or App 2 is determined by which activation keys are used during system registration. These activation keys specify which version of a content view a system will use and what repositories from that content view will be enabled. Now let's go back to our base operating system content view for a while. Remember, we have the base operating system content view that has the RHEL 7 and Satellite 6 tools repositories enabled and moves through a test QA production lifecycle path. Now let's say that every month I create a new version of this content view and I promote that through the test, QA, and production environments, and along the way, I patch all of the systems that are attached to this content view in the lifecycle environments, test, QA, and production. Now, this way of working was fine for App 1 and App 2 that we talked about before, but it's not fine for App 3. So let's talk about App 3 for a while. App 3, we can only patch every three months, and therefore, we need to handle it in a slightly different way. This is to create a dedicated content view for the application and then bundle that together with the base operating system content view into a composite content view. Using a composite content view, we can select a specific version of the base operating system content view and make that a component of the composite content view. Let's say we are using version 2.0 of the base operating system content view. I can combine that with, for example, version 1.0 of the App 3 content view and publish it as a new composite content view with its own version, version 1.0. We can then promote this new composite content view through the test, QA, and production lifecycle environments and subscribe systems to it using activation keys. All of the repositories that are both in the App 3 content view and the base operating system content view will be available to systems that are attached to this specific version of the composite content view. I can now leave my base operating system content view in place for a longer period of time, while I can exchange the App 3 content view for a new version, for example, version 2.0. This basically allows me to manage the life cycle of different content views with a different pace, while still making the repositories in both of those content views available to the systems that are attached to the composite content view. This also allows for different departments to manage component content views and then bundle those component content views into a composite content view. An example would be that the App3 content view would be managed by the App3 administrator team while the Linux department would manage the base operating system content view. So let's recap. Um, if you have multiple content views that need to be managed with a different speed, composite content views can help you. If you have multiple teams that need to manage different content views, 
composite content views can help you there as well. Um, for most other cases though, try and stick with plain content views if you can, because content views, uh, composite content views do add a little bit of extra management burden as you need to publish and promote um, the, the, the composite content view as well as the component content views. Um, puppet content views, special case, we'll discuss that next time. We have some, some other, or at least I have some other ideas around that. Um, and um, please read this document that is on the Red Hat customer portal uh, for more composite content use cases that I have not covered in this short video. Um, that was it for today. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out the blogs at 100things.wizard.com. And I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.